everyone, thank you for joining me once again. As you can see, we are back in the chair for some more chair yoga. So my prior chair yoga class was very simple. I've simplified this one even more. So if you or any of your loved ones have mobility issues, this is a great sequence to do to help get blood flowing through your entire body. For those of you that are not aware, yoga is definitely something that can easily be transferred into a chair. Just a few things. Um, try to get a chair that doesn't have any arms on it. It's a little bit easier to move. It's still doable if there are arms, but it's just a little bit easier without them. Secondly, make sure you're in a nice stable spot and that your chair doesn't rock. We definitely don't want any chairs with wheels because um, you can tend to float across the floor and you lose your balance a little bit more. So try to avoid the chairs with wheels as well. And third and most importantly, just have fun with this. This is such a relaxing yoga sequence. It's a great way to move blood through your body. And that's exactly what yoga is supposed to do. Get that blood flowing through your body. Get your muscles moving. I always like to say wherever blood flows, healing goes. So if you, have, if you ever have an injury or you're dealing with an issue, getting blood flow into that area will really help to heal you much faster. So we are going to start by sitting back. So sit back nice and comfortably in your chair. Make sure your feet can touch the floor. If not, you can take a stool and put them underneath your feet or roll up your yoga mat and just rest them. You just wanna make sure that your hips and your knees are in line. You don't want them to be up too high during this class. That was a little exaggeration, but just make sure that your hips and your knees are in line so that your feet are nice and flat and comfortable on the floor. And we are going to start with some ankle circles. So we're gonna start with our left leg. Extend your left leg out in front as, as high as you can go. It doesn't need to be completely straight. It can just be out ahead of you slightly and just start to do circles with your left ankle. So blood flow from your ankle is so important. So if you think about your body, your feet are going to be below your body for the majority of the day, whether you're walking, you're sitting, or you're standing. The biggest part of your day is spent on your feet. So gravity pulls all of the blood from the rest of your body and just lets it sit and accumulate in your ankles. And when we walk, we just kind of do this thing. We don't really move our ankles too much. So by doing this, we're giving a little bit of a massage to our ankles and we're helping that blood flow to move back to the rest of your body. Now start to draw circles in the opposite direction. I love teaching this pose to begin a lot of my yoga classes because it starts with your feet actually up in the sky. When I'm doing this on the mat, you lay on your back and your feet are up in the sky. So gravity is now working the opposite direction and it's pulling all of that blood flow from your feet back down into the rest of your body. So it just needs to work a little bit harder here, but you're still getting the same or similar benefits to this by just doing these nice ankle circles. Okay, let's lower your left leg and let's do the same with the right. Let's extend that right leg straight out and start to draw circles with this ankle. Doesn't matter which way you start, whichever feels most comfortable for you, we're going to get both sides going. So you'll make sure that you go in both directions. Now, the bigger the circles you can do, the better. So if your mobility just allows you to do these tiny circles, that's fine. You wanna build up to try to do as big of circles as possible. It's just gonna feel really, really good on your ankle and it's really gonna, you're kinda of gonna feel a little bit in your arches. You're going to feel a little bit of a massage going into the bottom of your feet. You might feel your, your arches stretch a little bit now start to draw circles in the opposite direction. And it just feels really good. There was one time I had a sprained ankle and by doing this pose, I actually kind of healed myself right away. It felt so good and it was because I got the blood flowing into my foot, I found that my mobility increased and I was able to get full range of motion in my ankle once again. Okay, let's lower your right foot down. Now extend your arms out in front of you and we're gonna do wrist and ankle, or we're gonna do wrist circles. So start to draw circles in front of you with your wrists, getting blood flow into your hands. This just feels really good. We use our hands for so much during the day as well. Writing, typing, talking on the phone, using your phone to text or play video games or use social media. So your hands get into this little motion where they're just holding on to something, they're gripping. So this is a great way to increase that energy into your wrist, get blood flow into your wrists, and get your wrists and hands out of that static move, a static position that they're in through a majority of the day. Now start to draw in the opposite direction. This just feels so good to get that blood flowing to really open up your wrists. Now, as we do some of these movements, 
you might hear cracking and popping and that's okay. Cracking and popping is not a sign of old age. It's just a sign of energy buildup. So you're releasing all of that energy that's been hanging out in your wrists or in your ankles and you're just releasing all of it. That's all it is. As long as it doesn't hurt, it's perfectly fine. Now we're going to move our elbows. So bring your arms up and then just start to draw circles with your elbows, getting some nice mobility into your elbows, building up the fluidity in there, getting them moving nice and, and big and, and making them move a little bit easier for you. So this is continuing to move that blood flow through your body. Just simple motions like this. It's, it's kind of like the law of least effort. You're doing so little by putting so little energy into it, but it's doing a world of difference for your body, really doing a whole lot. Now start to draw circles in the opposite direction. This might feel a little bit awkward if you're coming in as it's like you're a bird flapping its wings, <laughs> but we're going to flap our wings like a bird in a few moments. I have another pose that you're really going to enjoy. So just a nice way to get some mobility into your elbows, especially if you're on the phone all day and you're in this motion. This is a nice way to just bring a little bit of elasticity into your elbows. Okay, let's bring your arms down to your side. Now sit forward just slightly in your chair just so that your feet are flat on the ground. We don't want to lean back for some of these poses. We want a nice straight spine and you want to engage your body. So just sit forward. I probably have an inch between my back and the back of the chair. Place your left hand on the side of the chair if you have room. So mine is, is right here. Place your left hand on the side of the chair. Extend your right arm straight up to the sky and just kind of lean into your left arm. Couple things. Make sure not to crunch up your shoulder into your ear. Make sure your shoulder is back and away from your ear. This is going to relax your neck and your spine. It's going to release any tension you might be holding on to. And with your head, you can either continue to look forward or you can look up at the ceiling, whatever feels most comfortable for your neck. If you have neck pain, looking up might hurt and looking straight ahead or somewhere in between might be a little bit more comfortable for you. Take a deep inhale and then exhale. Let's lower that right hand down. Let's do the same with the left arm. Extend that left arm straight up to the sky, right at right shoulder back and away from your ears, looking either up at your left fingertips or forward or somewhere in between. So the wonderful thing that I love about yoga is that you don't always have to take the deepest position in a pose. You can listen to your body and do what your body will allow you to do. Some days, you can touch your toes and other days you can barely touch your knees. And that's the great thing about yoga is just listening to what your body tells you to do. Okay, exhale. Let's bring that left hand down. Now let's do the same with the right. Extend your right arm up and then slightly reaching over. Try not to bend your elbow. Try to keep a straight line from your rib cage up to the tips of your fingers. Take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, let's bend that right arm. Place the palm of your hand just behind your head. So if you have a ponytail like I do, your hand will pretty much go right where your ponytail is. If you don't have a ponytail, imagine where it would go and just place the palm of your hand back there. This is a great deep side stretch. Not a whole lot of effort going into this. Again, you're doing what your body will let you do. Okay, take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, slowly start to reach your elbow a little bit deeper to the back of the room or maybe straight up to the ceiling. So I'm not fully rotated. I don't think our bodies can completely rotate so that elbow faces the back of the room, but just getting a little bit of rotation into your spine. My back just popped a little bit, so I gave myself my own chiropractic adjustment. Take a nice deep inhale, exhale, extend that right arm straight up to the sky, bring that right arm back down onto the opposite, opposite side of the chair. Let's do the same on the left. Extend that left arm straight up and then reach it over. Once again, paying attention not to bend your left elbow. Make sure that right shoulder is back and away from your ears, helping yourself to relax comfortably and rest in this pose. Either looking forward or up at the ceiling. Take a deep inhale and then exhale. Bend your left elbow. Place the palm of your left hand just where your ponytail should go or is. <laughs> Continuing to breathe, taking nice deep inhales and nice full exhales. Breathing in yoga is so very important. One of my favorite quotes, in addition to wherever blood flows, healing goes, is um, never sacrifice the breath for the glory of the pose. So always continue to breathe. As long as you're breathing, you're doing the pose correctly. Okay, deep inhale. 
And then as you exhale, slowly start to rotate that elbow, that shoulder toward the back of the room. Maybe that elbow is pointing straight up to the ceiling like mine is. Continuing to breathe, trying to rotate your neck so that you can look up a little bit, or just not rotating your neck, just guiding your neck back with your hand as your arm rotated. Continuing to breathe, take a nice deep inhale, exhale, extend that left arm straight up to the sky and bring that left arm down. And now let's introduce some neck circles. So slowly start to rock your head back and forth from right to left. So you're rocking your head in the front of your body. Now when you hit one side, start to roll it to the back. We want to build up to full circles. But sometimes going right into a full neck circle is a little uncomfortable. So you might just need to do a few half circles and building up to one or two or maybe three full circles eventually. Again, you might hear some cracking and popping. And again, that's perfectly normal. You hold, a, we all hold a lot of stress in our shoulders and in our neck. So when you hear that cracking and popping, you're releasing stress, you're releasing tension, and you're releasing tightness. Okay, let's bring our neck back into center, kind of wobble it back and forth to make sure your head is on straight. And we're gonna move into a variation on some Qigong movements. So Qigong is energy flow. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the people in the park that like to do this a lot. So we have some really good, uh, really good movements that we can translate into the chair. The first one I call heaven and earth. So let's bring the palms of your hands together. Take a deep inhale. Let's press your left arm straight up to the sky and then press your right hand. Now you can press it down in between your legs so maybe moving your legs apart just a little bit. And then inhale, bring those palms back together. Exhale, left hand presses down, right hand presses up. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, back to center. One more time. This time, as we rotate to the left, really reach that left hand all the way up to the heavens and that right hand all the way down to the earth. Feel this nice stretch along the left hand side of your body. Coming back to center. Last time as we rotate to the right, let's do the same. Reach that right palm all the way up to the sky, left hand all the way down to the ground, really feeling the stretch from your shoulders, maybe all the way up to your fingertips, and then back to center. Okay, bring your feet just a little bit closer together. Now we're gonna go into that bird of prey. So take a deep inhale, make a nice big opening with your chest, maybe getting a little bit of an arch in your upper back, looking up to the sky. Exhale, let's curl your shoulders over, getting a little bit of a hump in your upper back, bringing those arms past each other. Try to remember which hand goes on top. Not very important, but if you're trying to be consistent with your movement, take a big inhale, let's make, make a nice big opening in your chest, looking up to the sky. Exhale, now let's switch those arms. Opposite hand floats on top. Inhale, nice big opening in your chest. Exhale, opposite hand comes back around on top. Inhale, big opening in your chest. Exhale, curling over, just like a bird of prey. Nice big opening last time. And then exhale, curling over, bringing those arms closer together. Big opening in your chest. Exhale, lower those hands back down. Okay, we're gonna go into a movement called pulling down from the heavens. Now this, this movement is beneficial, not just in yoga. If you work out regularly and you find that you get your heart rate up in whatever exercise you do, maybe you're a runner, maybe you're a ball player and you find yourself running from base to base regularly and you just wanna bring your heart rate down, this is a wonderful movement. Um, you can do this after your workout and it's a great way to control your breath. Bring your heart rate down and bring your blood pressure down. So we start with our hands out by our sides. Deep inhale. Reach your arms all the way up to the sky as you look up at the sky. Exhale. Now press your palms down, your palms face down into your lap, bringing them out to the side one more time. So we're going to go through this a few times. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. That helps you to relax a little bit more and bring that blood pressure and breathing down. Inhale. Reach those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale. Press it all down. Fingertips out to the side. Deep inhale, reach those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, press it all down. Inhale, fingertips out to the side, reaching those arms all the way up to the sky. 
Exhale, pressing it all down. One last time, fingertips out to the side. Deep inhale, reach those arms all the way up. Now bring the palms of your hands together, lower your palms to heart center, close your eyes. Try to feel for your heartbeat with the backs of your thumbs. Probably beating very slowly. We haven't done a lot of big movements. We haven't put our head below our heart. Those are the movements that get your heart rate going. But we're gonna do that just for a little bit, nothing too crazy. Take a nice deep inhale, slowly open your eyes, keep your hands at your heart center. Deep inhale and exhale. Extend your arms all the way up to the sky. Really, really reach. Deep inhale, exhale. Open your arms and then swan dive down. Bring your hands down toward your feet. Now coming down as low as you can. If maybe right here is where you are, then stop right here. We're going to flow back and forth in this position for a few movements. Deep inhale, reaching those arms all the way up to the sky, reaching up nice and tall. Exhale, open your arms. Swan dive down, folding down toward your feet. Inhale, reaching those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, open your arms, swan dive down, folding down toward your feet. Inhale, nice big opening, reaching those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, open your arms, swan dive down, hands toward your feet. We're gonna do this one last time. Deep inhale, reaching those arms all the way up. Exhale, open your arms, swan dive down, hands to your feet. And just for a moment, let yourself relax here. You can step your feet a little bit further away apart and just let your body rest between your legs. You can let your head drop a little bit. This brings you into a variation on ragdoll pose. This helps to take pressure off of your lower back. If you let your head hang, it also releases tension in your neck. If you don't love this, you can just rest on your forearms to help support yourself. This is still going to take that tension off of your lower back. If you let your head drop, you're supporting your body to hold yourself up a little bit more and you're able to just let that neck relax a little bit. Okay, wherever you are, deep inhale. Let's come back up into a seated position. Bring the palms of your hands back together once again. Bring those hands to heart center, touching your heart with the backs of your thumbs. Close your eyes. And now pay attention to your heartbeat. So we only did a few of those, but that's enough to get your heart going, to get your blood pumping, to help circulate blood throughout your entire body. Take a deep inhale and open your mouth, exhale with a sigh. Okay, keeping the palms of your hands together, slowly open your eyes. Bring your hands a little bit further away from your chest. We're going to go into a movement that's great for your forearms. If you find that you might have carpal tunnel syndrome, um, then this is a great movement for you. Very quick caveat, if you have been diagnosed with carpal tunnel and this hurts, or if you've had surgery, don't go as deep into this rotation that I'm about to show you. Only rotate your fingertips forward just a little bit. Okay, let's press our palms together. So your forearms kind of form this straight line when you do that. Take a deep inhale, and then as you exhale, start to rotate your fingertips forward, continuing to press those palms together, rotating them only as deep as you feel comfortable. So if you've got a lot of flexibility in your hands, you might be able to rotate them all the way down. If that hurts, please don't do that. Just rotate them back. Fingertips facing forward is a great way to start with this pose. Building up that flexibility in your forearms will help you to get into this position. Okay, deep inhale. Let's rotate those fingertips upward once again. We're gonna do that one more time. I love doing poses more than once because that's when you really feel it. The first time is the test. The second time is when you know what you're doing. Deep inhale and then exhale. Let's rotate those fingertips forward or down, whatever feels comfortable for you. And noticing that you might actually be able to get a little bit more comfortable in this pose, rotating those fingers just a little bit more. This pose works almost immediately. It's a great way to really build up that flexibility in your arms. Deep inhale. Exhale, let's rotate those fingertips back up to the sky, and now just move your wrists just to get some blood flowing back into your wrists. After being in a static position, you really wanna increase that blood flow. Okay, let's sit comfortably in our chair. Once again, straight spine, um, feet flat on the floor. Make sure your, your knees are in line with your hips or as close to being in line with your hips as possible. Our spine moves in six directions, and when you're seated all day, your spine takes a brunt of the seated position. Um, so we are going to move through a sequence called six directions of the spine. Our spine technically moves in six directions. 
So this is how we're going to nurture it. So we're going to start with the palms of your hands up to the sky. Take a deep inhale, exhale. Let's lower your left hand down onto the chair and extend your right arm up and over. Inhale, let's bring that left arm back up to what I call temple pose. Exhale, let's lower your right hand down. Left arm reaches over. This is what I call half moon. Inhale, back up to temple. Exhale, half moon to the right. Now I'm gripping the side of my chair. Whatever feels comfortable for you is what you can do. Inhale, back up to temple. Exhale, half moon to the left. Inhale, back up to temple. Exhale, half moon to the right. Inhale, back up to temple. Exhale, half moon to the left. We're gonna do this one more time in each direction. Inhale to temple. Exhale, half moon to the right. Nope, to the left, sorry. Inhale, back up to temple. And exhale, half moon to the right. And inhale to temple. Okay, let's keep those arms in temple. Deep inhale, now we're gonna do a rotation, but I don't want you to rotate like you're going to crack your back. I just want you to do a gentle rotation. So turn your torso to look to the left. Lower your right hand down to the outside of your left knee. Now with your left hand, you can either grasp the side of the chair like we just did, or you can grasp the back of the chair, wherever you feel more comfortable. This will not bring you into as deep a twist. So if you have any restrictions or tightness in your back, you might need to start here. If your back has a little bit more flexibility, then coming here is perfectly fine. But don't put too much pressure on your right hand because you don't want to go into that. We're not chiropractors today. Deep inhale, let's come back up to temple. Exhale, now let's rotate to the right. Your left hand goes to the outside of your right knee. Your right hand to anywhere on the side of the chair that you feel comfortable. Inhale, back up to temple. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, to temple. Exhale, to the right. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the left. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the right. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the left. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the right. One more time in each direction. Inhale to temple. Exhale to the left. Inhale to temple and exhale to the right. And inhale back to temple and then exhale. Let's lower your hands down to your knees. So our final, uh, final movement in six directions of the spine is cat cow pose. And we're going to be arching and curling our back. So take a deep inhale, drop your shoulders back and down, get a little bit of an arch in your upper back. Your stomach presses forward slightly and looking just slightly up. You don't need to look all the way up to the ceiling. Maybe just slightly ahead. And this is cow pose. Exhale, now let's curl your shoulders over. Get a little bit of a hump in your upper back. Looking down into your lap as we come into cat pose. Inhale, let's curl those shoulders back again. Slight arch in your upper back. Looking slightly up towards the ceiling. And exhale, curling those shoulders over. Looking down into your lap coming into cat pose. Inhale, shoulders back and down, cow pose. Exhale, curling those shoulders over, coming into cat. Inhale, coming into cow, shoulders back and down. Exhale, curling over, coming into cat. We're gonna do this one more time. Each time, let's hold it for a breath. Inhale, shoulders back and down, looking slightly up, Feeling this nice stretch in your spine as we continue to breathe. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Let's curl your shoulders over and looking down into your lap. Feeling this nice stretch along your spine and inhale. Let's come back up into a seated position. Okay, now we're going to go back into our hands to feet pose. This time we're going to incorporate our legs. We're going to include a little bit of leg movement. So take a deep inhale, reach those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, open your arms, swan dive down, bring your hands down toward the ground or anywhere that you feel comfortable. As you come up, let's guide that left leg to come up with us. So if it can just come up an inch off the floor or if you can pull it all the way up into your chest, anywhere in between is perfectly fine. 
Let's lower that left foot back down as we fold over one more time. Inhale, let's come up with that right leg, bringing your right leg up as high as you feel comfortable. Try not to rock all the way back into the chair so that your back is touching the chair. You still wanna sit up nice and tall. Exhale, let's fold over, guiding your right foot back down. Exhale, let's come back up, bringing that left foot up with us anywhere in the middle feels, that feels good for you. Exhale, let's fold over. Inhale, let's come up with the right. And exhale, bringing the right foot back down. Exhale, let's come up with the left. Let's fold over, guiding the left foot back down one last time. Inhale, coming up with the right. And exhale, folding back down. And then inhale, slowly coming up into a seated position. Okay, let's bring our knees a little bit further apart. Maybe you'll need to sit a little bit closer to the edge of the chair just to help support yourself and to sit comfortably in this pose. So we're going to go into goddess pose. Goddess pose is basically a squatting position that we do from a regular standing position, but now we're using the chair to help guide us. But it's really good to help with your spine and it's good for your hip flexor. So this really helps to build mobility in your hips. So just bring your feet to whatever distance feels comfortable for you. Have your toes pointing out slightly. This is going to help stabilize you in this pose. And just sit up nice and tall, shoulders back and down. And feel this nice opening in your hips, nice opening in your groin. This is, this is really, really good for your lower back as well. This is almost like doing butterfly pose, but in a chair. So if you're familiar with butterfly, this is a, this is a great benefit of this pose. Okay, take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, just start to guide your left hand a little bit further down the inside of your left leg. Even if it only comes to the inside of your knee, that's perfectly fine. If you build up to bringing your hand all the way down to your ankle, that's fine as well. I'm gonna stop at my knee and then just extend your right arm up to the sky. So you're leaning into that knee just a little bit. You've got a little bit of a twist in your spine. Wherever blood flows, healing goes. So you're twisting your spine and increasing that blood flow. Exhale, let's bring your left hand down. Slide your, or sorry, bring your right hand down. Slide your right hand down the inside of your leg. Extend that left arm all the way up to the sky. So this is goddess with a twist. Exhale, let's bring that left hand down. Right arm extends up. And exhale, let's extend that left arm down. Inhale, left arm extends up. Exhale, left arm comes down, right arm comes up. This is the last one, deep inhale and exhale. Come back to a seated position. You can bring your feet a little bit closer together. Maybe scoot yourself back slightly in the chair. This last one is probably one of my favorite movements. Um, you can do this lying down. You can do this one in bed. This is a great way to fall asleep but I love to do this one when I'm checking my email because so many times when you're sitting at your desk first thing in the morning, or if you're sitting anywhere else and you're, you're, or if you're on your phone, your shoulders tend to curl over and you kind of attack. You're ready to, to pounce on those emails and reply. So this is a really nice way to comfortably check your emails in the morning. So extend your arms straight up above your head and then bend your elbows. Grasp the opposite forearm or wrist with the opposite hand and then just let your hands rest on the crown of your head. So this is what I call guppy arms. It's a variation on a pose that I call guppy pose. And this is a great way to just scan the screen every morning. This helps to bring your shoulders back and down. So this is the complete opposite of this. So your shoulders are back and down. You've got a nice straight line for oxygen to get into your lungs. So you're breathing a little bit more easily. And this is a nice calming position. If you read a bad email or if you read a bad news report, you can't attack when you're in this position. You can't help but feel relaxed and calm and a little bit zen. So you can, you, you can stay in this position for as long as you feel comfortable. You can watch TV in this position. I'm known to just rest my hands on the top of my head sometimes when I watch TV. I find it so very relaxing and comforting. Okay, take a deep inhale. Exhale, let's release your hands down to your sides. And this will conclude our yoga session. So very, very easy, very simple. Do what you can, only do the, do, listen to your body. Listen to your body's limitations. I always say there's two sounds in yoga, yum and yuck. If your body says yum, continue to do it. If your body says yuck, maybe pull back a little bit, or maybe you're just having an off day and then you can try it another day. 
but I hope that you're able to incorporate these into your daily routine. I can't wait to see you again and namaste.